Oh, 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 I'm excited. Last video. Oh. Today, I'm going to deliver the final episode of How to Bike, which makes me kind of sad. Oh no, don't feel bad. This episode is rad. And a meeting I had shows that this series is no passing fad. It should make you glad. Season two is in my notepad. <laughs> Bars! <laughs> 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 Do we learn how to jump? Yeah, roll the intro, come on, roll in. <laughs> okay. There is no skill more widely desired in the mountain bike skill set than the ability to casually float a jump perfectly from takeoff to landing. There's also not many more feelings as good as clearing a jump for the first time. This is because jumps are hard. <laughs> The risk involved can be high and the consequences can be severe and it's this combination of difficulty and risk that gives you the mixture of satisfaction and adrenaline that is hard to beat. I'm not trying to scare any viewers off here, but I just want to emphasize that jumps are to be respected and honestly, it's not for everyone. You don't have to jump your bike to enjoy riding, but if you're interested in how to do it properly, I'll try and explain. Let's begin. In the drops episode, I tried to quantify what a drop was and might have failed. I've thought about it for a while and here's where I'm at for the definition of drops and jumps. A jump in a general sense is any time both wheels leave the ground and land again. Remove the bike from the equation and that makes perfect sense. Jump on the spot, jump up there, jump down here, jump over there, jump off this. Any time you separate yourself from the ground, that's a jump. Unless you fall off something, it needs intention. You need to proactively initiate the act of jumping through your actions. That means drops or jumps. I would argue that a drop is a type of jump in which your wheels leave the ground and move in a downward direction. So dropping. That would mean that the other version of a jump is where you're moving up when both wheels leave the ground before coming back down. Funny that there's not a different word for the up version. I and mean, what's the opposite of a drop? Rise? Lift? Ascend? Oh, dude. See that? I ascended that thing a tree. Ascended? Dude, you're weird. Why does everyone keep saying that? Does anyone like him? Ascended. I guess we'll just stick with jump for now. It's good to start with the common mistakes that lots of people make when jumping so you can spot things to improve in your own jumping techniques. The most dangerous one I see is the crumple. Jumps create a lot of g-forces on your body as a jump converts some of your horizontal momentum into vertical momentum. These g-forces feel like you're being pulled down into your bike which can cause you to fold up into the bike like a cheap deck chair and then get spat into the air like a sack of potatoes out of an air cannon. So many crashes and near misses are caused by this and it mostly happens to inexperienced jumpers because the default learned tactic is to stay loose and absorb features. You can get away with this on small jumps, but not the big ones. Oh! Oh! oh. The techniques I'll talk about later on will sort this out. The other popular issue is the air. This is where you go squint after takeoff and throw out your favorite expletive before either getting overly friendly with the dirt or thanking your favorite higher power for saving you. This isn't necessarily caused by any specific technique, but it can be exacerbated by a bad technique. Good push. It's caused by imbalance in the compression through your hands as you go up the takeoff. Any slight difference in pressure from left to right can input just a little bit of steering just as you float into the air, which can set you off balance. If your weight is too far left or right of your front wheels contact patch when you land, you're gonna to struggle to save it. 
You can use this knowledge to your advantage though and you can land a really squint jump or a whip and steer out of it if you keep your mass centered over that front wheel. We can't forget the world famous deceased mariner. In simple terms, this is where you tense up mid-flight and it's caused by sheer unmitigated panic. This could be because airtime is your least favorite form of time or you've made a mistake on the takeoff causing you to pitch, yaw or roll in a way not conducive to landing safely. It's an outcome of bad technique and not normally a mistake in itself. How about the absolute classic Ronnie Mac Air? So named for the world famous professional motorcycle rider who popularized the move. This can be caused by many errors, but like I explained in the previous drops video, jumps will naturally cause you to pitch forward. This happens because as the front wheel leaves the takeoff, it is unsupported in the air, where the shape of the jump or the rider's technique dumps a lot of force perpendicular to the angle of the jump into that back wheel. If the rider's center of gravity is in front of that force, well, yeah, you're gonna have a fun time. Here's the Mac. The Mac's back. The final mistake I see a lot is the fake floater. This is where riders mistakenly pull the bike off the ground and tuck it up underneath them. It works and it can look like you're getting some serious hang time, but it's super inefficient. You don't jump on your feet by hoiking them off the ground like that. And the same goes for bikes. So if you find yourself always having to go faster to clear a jump, then you probably need to practice the techniques in this vid. So whenever I'm teaching anyone jumping, I always start with a nice chill tabletop jump that has a mellow concave takeoff with a big open radius. This allows for mistakes and is the most forgiving type of jump compared to gap jumps or steeper jumps. Oi. The temptation can be to practice on really small jumps, but quite often they have really sharp takeoffs with small radii and the sharper the takeoff, the more wild and unpredictable the jump. By the way, if you're building jumps, it's a good idea to make the takeoff at least a bike length long and start mellow. Oh, also, if you're wondering, you don't need to run flat pedals to practice this, but they can help highlight any mistakes you might be making. Once I found a chill tabletop, it's then time to teach that person how to not jump. That might seem really strange, but it's so important to have the skill that allows you to safely abort a jump just in case you mess up on the entrance or come in too fast. If you've been following the How To Bike series, you already know how to do this as it's the absorbing technique from an earlier episode. Good job watching all the videos. Appreciate it. I'll really quickly go over that here just in case you missed it. So for smaller jumps, what you want to do is extend the arms and legs to stand up tall just before the jump to create lots of space between you and the bike. Then as the wheels go up the face of the jump, bend the arms and then the legs, allowing the bike to come up towards you. The next step depends on your speed and the severity of the jump. If you're going slower or the jump's just super mellow, you can just settle back into a centered riding position and deal with the rest of the feature. Or if it's a tabletop, you can actually treat it like a big roller and stay coiled up and then pump the bike down the other side. If you were coming in a bit hot, then you have to add in a little push forward of the bike as the front wheel crests the top of the jump. The faster you're going and the more severe the jump, the more you should push forward. But what about jumps that are bigger than the amount of room that you've got underneath you? Simple, pump the bike into the base of the takeoff by standing tall and staying centered in the bike as you go up it. Then perform the aforementioned absorb and push near the top of the jump. You might notice in some of these examples, I still take off and land at the landing slope. We'll say hello to the technique for jumping when you're going too fast. For anyone that races or just likes going as fast as possible, this will probably be your default jumping technique. This absorbing technique can be adjusted according to your speed and the size of the jump to control how far you jump. Letting the bike come up all the way into you as fast as possible will make you jump a shorter distance and letting the bike come up only a little bit and at a slower speed will make you jump further if your speeds are equal. You can play with the absorbing technique to do some cool tricks. How about only absorbing a little bit with your arms and absorbing fully with your legs? that will loft the front wheel more than the back, putting you in the perfect position to manual across the table or between rollers. Even cooler is when you do the opposite and fully absorb with the arms, but not with the legs, to loft the back wheel more than the front. Instant nose manual. And as you've got steering input with the front wheel, you can get really creative with it. Just make sure you do it somewhere safe. Whoa. 
Right, that covers absorbing jumps side of the whole jumping spectrum. Now we get to the fun side. Ascent, no, it, it doesn't work. I don't like that. Any form of technique that generates additional height on a jump, most people call that popping. There's a few different ways of popping off a jump and the most basic way that almost everyone starts with is performing a two wheel hop or American bunny hop near the top of the takeoff. It's a good start, but there's a lot of shortcomings. If you try and hop both wheels at the same time, the front wheel will get a nice pop off the lip of the jump, but the back wheel will unweight and take off a full bike length before the lip. This usually means that each wheel will get a different amount of pop, which can cause some weird stuff to happen. Also, that back wheel is not taking advantage of the full takeoff, which to be quite honest, it's just wasteful. And in this day and age, you should be ashamed of yourself for not utilizing the full thing ashamed we need to use the proper popping technique so that both wheels utilize the full takeoff you may have heard it described as doing an american bunny hop on the lip this is sort of true especially on really flat and mellow takeoffs as the jump doesn't have the angle or curve to help you up into the air the reason i say it's sort of true is that for most jumps the technique does not feel like a bunny hop and the jump actually does most of the work for you but knowing how to do a proper American bunny hop can be really useful. There are about 57 or so videos on YouTube for how to do this though, so we won't dwell on it now, unless we get 5,000 likes on this video. To jump higher and further, you need to push the bike into the takeoff without hopping both wheels at the same time. That means you have to unweight the front wheel at the lip, then drive the back wheel into the remainder of the takeoff to generate the pop. But if you put lots of force into the back wheel and your center of gravity isn't directly above that force, you will induce a rotation, most likely forward rotation. Oh no! <laughs> good bail, good bail! This is gonna get a little complicated, but stick with me here. As you approach the jump, you should be in the glorious boss stance we learned about in episode three. Just before you hit the base of the jump, you can prepare by bending the arms and legs to dip into the bike. You don't have to dip at all, but the more you want to pop, the more you should dip. As the front wheel comes up the takeoff, you have to fight the natural urge to soften your arms and absorb the takeoff. Doing this shifts your weight forward, and if you then try to pop, it will send you out the front door, and no one wants that not absorbing with your arms, feels like you're gently pressing the bike into the takeoff. Your legs follow suit, resisting those g-forces while smoothly pressing the back wheel into the takeoff. This feels like pumping the bike up the takeoff with a difference. You have to allow yourself to rotate backwards with the bike as you go up the takeoff and not lean forward. This can be scary and feels like you're going to loop out off the back of your bike. Trust me, you won't. This act of allowing the face of the jump to rotate you backwards handily does the job that the front wheel lift does when bunny hopping, which is beautifully efficient. But not all jumps are the same. Some jumps are flatter or shorter, and some jumps are steeper or longer, so you have to adjust how far you rotate your body before you pop. A really small flat jump will do nothing, so you may have to input a huge front wheel lift to get back into the correct position. A super steep jump might move you back too far, so you actually have to move forward in the bike as you go up it to get into the correct position. It's so hard to convey how far to rotate back, which is one of the reasons popping is so hard to teach and learn. The next steps should help make it a bit more clear. At this point, you've prepped, you've smoothly pressed the bike up the face of the jump and rotated your weight back. Now it's time to pop. If you're planning on just giving it a mellow pop, you'll push your arms to full extension as if you were trying to do a tiny front wheel lift so that your arms are under tension and pulling on the bars. This is so key to controlled jumping. This smooth unweighting of the bars as the arms move into straight tension reduces the chances of engaging a rogue steering input that you'd get from the two wheel bouncing off the takeoff technique. From here, you can now straighten your legs with a firm push, pump or pop. If you nosedive when trying to pop, you most likely didn't shift your weight back far enough before popping. If you did a nose up pencil, you most likely didn't press the back wheel all the way up the lip to complete the pop. Learn, adapt, overcome. You can take this technique further by dipping down to prepare beforehand, which allows you to add more of a push back with the arms and more of a kick through the legs to generate more pop. 
Also, as jumps get steeper, you'll gain more height with this exaggerated technique, but you can lose distance, which is definitely something to be aware of. Oh, right, that's the hard bit done. So now you're in the air. How the heck do you stop your feet floating away from the pedals? Well, you can add a slight back pressure with your rear foot by dipping your toes and pushing back into the pedal to create tension between your bars and pedals that will lock you into the bike. It's super subtle and once you've got it, you'll barely notice you're doing it. It's also recommended to stay relaxed, let the bike level out underneath you and keep the arms and legs close to straight. That is just a recommendation though, you can really do what you want, go nuts. Finally, you are cleared for landing. When landing, you can touch down back wheel first, but if you've been blown by the wind or made a mistake and gone squint in the air, you need that front wheel back on the ground to try and save it. I aim to try and land slightly front wheel first and to use as much of the landing as possible to make it smooth and fluid. So to recap, approach with confidence in boss stance. Prepare by dipping if required. Allow the takeoff to rotate you back while smoothly pumping up the face. Just before the lip, push back to put your arms in tension. Pop through the legs. In the air, press gently back into your rear pedal. Stay relaxed. Angle the bike into the landing. Roll away like a boss. And that should be it. A controlled and floaty jump popped with precision. I seriously hope at least some of that made sense as I've been pulling my hair out trying to figure out how to explain this as concisely as possible. One thing you have to remember though is that most people that jump well don't have a clue how they do it. Everything you have just watched while interesting, possibly educational, hopefully entertaining, will not suddenly turn you into a popping pro. Jumping takes time and practice. So the number one thing is to get out and play on some nice safe jumps. Go watch episode one, how to learn, if you want help in applying this new skill and good luck. And that is it. How to bike season one done in the bag. That's a wrap. It's been unreal seeing all the great feedback from everyone in the series. So thank you to everyone who's watched, liked and subscribed to Pink Bike. Bunch of legends. Now it's up to you. Get out there, rack up some air miles, play around with a familiar jump, jump further, jump higher, jump lower, jump faster, jump safer. Jump down into the comments and let us know what you'd like to see in season two. I've been Ben Cathro. He's been Max Rendell. This guy's been Glenn Thompson. And this is Pink Bike. We'll see you all soon in a bit. Bye boys. Cheers, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Yeah. Bye. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and the ability to casually float a jump perfectly from takeoff to landing. Sorry, let me do that again. What are we doing? That was quite good. I liked having him in the background. Let the bike come up towards you. Up. Good one, done that. Good, good job. Pat the back. Ascent. Ascension. Up. Altitude. Up. Down. It's time to go up. <laughs> but the back wheel one unweight. But the back. Oh, f it. Heck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely not. Up. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, you're in there. <laughs> <laughs>